just for the record, clarify. Review of the stable's condition. I have a motion. Um, hold on, I'm trying to catch up. A motion to review stable condition. Yes. I have a second. That's not what the recommendation is. That's not what Wait, where are we? Here under the stables. 5E. Oh, that's not the way it's on here. Here, I'm sorry. The, the motion is to close the stables and utilize the upcoming community needs assessment and master planning process to determine future development of the property. I have a motion for what she said. So moved. Second. Okay. All right. And discussion. Yeah, I have some discussion. Okay. I think that we need to discuss this further and look at some other ideas. Um, I think that we're not examining everything that we could out there and I don't think we're even um, promoting the stables the way we could. I looked at the website yesterday and it's, it's pretty basic. There's a section where you can click on for events and there's no events listed. No horse shows, no fall fest, nothing is listed under events. Um, basic, very basic information doesn't talk about the levels of what each, you know, what you need to have for each level of riding. I mean, it's just, it's so basic. It's, it's kind of pathetic, actually, that page. And I think that we need to do a better job of that. I think it's a worthwhile um, facility to have that hasn't been used to its full potential. I realize that it needs work. It needs a lot of work. So I've done a little bit of investigating on that, and I'd like to pass out some papers if anyone will take one of these. This is a company called Brightspan, and they construct these in Illinois and Wisconsin um, at a pretty favorable amount. You can see that the facilities themselves are beautiful. He gave me a rough guess. Um, construction, for instance, um, a building that would be roughly what, our, what the arena is now, 120 by 280, I don't know exactly what it is, but I was kind of estimating. But they just built, um, and it, it, it includes the concrete piers, um, all the materials that need, are needed to build, and um, then the owner can actually add whatever additional lighting, but you can see that it needs very little lighting. Um, it's an actual fabric, like a steel fabric. Um, it qualifies for snow loads that are typical um, in Wisconsin and Illinois, um, and the cost would be $860,000. And that's a lot less than what land construction gave us, which, I don't know, were those guesstimates or were those actual? Um, it, just, it just seems to me that if we're, if we're looking at this facility and talking about closing it because of the number of residents and non-residents, then I think we need to do a better job of having it appeal to our residents. And I think we also need to face the fact that if we're going to look at that criteria for this facility, then we better look at every facility with that criteria. For instance, when we were talking about pickleball, the picker group gave us um, a number that they had 3,000 people on their mailing list and less than 1,000 were Palatine residents. So why are we continuing to build pickleball courts if we're trying to satisfy non-residential use? So why is that criteria okay for pickleball but not for the stable? And I just, I bet there's a lot of other facilities, some bigger than others, but you know, we never survey people at the playground and find out how many of them are residents. We don't ask people on the bike trail how many people are residents or tennis courts or you know, anything. Or if somebody brings a guest to the pool we're not asking where that guest lives. On a golf course, one person calls in, makes a reservation for a foursome. We know where that person lives, but we do we know about the other, four, other three? So I think if we're going to start applying that criteria to one facility, 
We have to do it across the board, to be fair. And so I think that this motion is premature. I think we need to do more research. I certainly don't want anyone to be in an unsafe facility. However, this is the perfect time if we're going to be doing something with the arena and it has to be demolished. Horses can live outside in the summer. We have no stallions out at the barn. Geldings and mares can be out in a pasture together. There is always a bad, you know, juvenile delinquent in there someplace that can be separated. But if you talk to Anna, um, off the, I mean, for instance, look at ranches out west. They put all the horses out in one big pasture, you know. We don't have that big of pasture, obviously, so if there's a troublemaker, it might have to be separated. But we do have a big arena and another smaller one. The lower barn could have temporary stalls put in it, like we put in for the horse shows, if we needed to put them in at night. Um, or and basically in the, in the summer, they really just need water and some shade. They don't need to be covered. And they'll do fine. And multiple ponies can go into one stall. So there are ways to do this without, the, without ending the program. And I think we need to reach out again to NWSRA. I know during the pandemic they cut way back on a lot of programming, but that was a very popular program for them. And I think it's essential for those kids to have that outlet. <clears throat> One mother told me that, this is a show. One mother told me that the only time her son could straighten his legs when he was on a horse. The rest of his life was in a wheelchair. And I'm sorry, but there, there's some benefits to the stable that outweigh the negatives. And I think we need to look at it. And just have a motion that just says, let's close the farm without giving the people who patronize it the opportunity to be here, go, who's notified of this? It's not fair. <coughs> it's fake. So, so I'm sorry to get emotional, but the you know, who is now in his 30s who has never straightened his legs, except when he's on horse, it means something. And I think, I think we need to look at one other thing. And that is, I'm wondering if this is a slightly a sexist issue. The, 90, the, the stables is probably patronized by 90% women or, or girls. There are not too many boys, young boys, who ride horses. When my kids were little, my son was oftentimes the only boy in his class. And we were able to afford his own horse, of course. Now, if you look at the Olympic riders, Olympic equestrian events are the only events in the Olympics that males compete against females on an equal basis. It's the only event. They don't do that in swimming or volleyball or anything else. Only horseback riding. And I think it's important in a lot of ways that we continue to stay and we look at alternatives rather than just closing it because there's some rotten wood out there. And a lot of rotten wood. I'm not, I'm not trying to um, negate the importance of safety. Obviously, it has to be a safe facility. But I don't think we need to close it without further promoting it and examining it and looking at the total picture. Okay. Thank you, Sue. Anyone else have any comments? I'd like to table this motion. I know we have no discussion yet. Okay. We'll, we'll see where. Um, I understand where you're coming from. I understand your emotional attachment to the stable, and you've been going there for 50 years. I know. I know. And I know that's very hard. Um, I'm not going to knock this idea, but I think if someone gives you a price for 850000 over the phone, it's probably a million, too. And even if it's 850000 we're not taking into account the demolition costs and those kinds of things. Yes, so there are some additional costs. So, right. so, that, so there would be some demolition costs and right. putting it in the landfill and all additional those kinds of things. Electrical, electrical right. Additional electrical, plumbing, you know, um, obviously. But he was talking about the materials and they, they call it a kit mm -hmm. where you get everything delivered right. that needs to be done and needs to be put up. And 
it's used in a lot of the commercial stables around. Um, there's other systems too. Um, that, uh, I didn't copy one for everybody, but there's, you know, Airscape is an inflatable dome. This is bright span that I gave you. Clear span is, is fairly similar. There's ranch arenas that are metal buildings with a lot of skylights. Um, Tosco, that's a fabric cutter, cut, covered, and, um, and that's a Canadian company, so they know all about snow loads. And Weather Sport, which is also fabric. And all of these work in you know, Wisconsin, Minnesota, Michigan, Illinois. So it's not like you know we're building something in Florida where they don't worry about snow load um, or wind. I don't need sixty thousand dollars. Right. You still need a contractor to put in the concrete right. piers. Right. And um, and and build it. Right. Yeah. So yeah, we're we're definitely not talking just eight hundred and sixty thousand right. dollars. Right. However, but I I don't think we're talking three million either. So the, the one thing we would have to consider too is that the village would accept this as a permanent structure. I have worked with Sue in the past with ClearSpan on other for storage facilities having that, so you, you need to make sure that it also meets the zoning requirements of the local jurisdiction. Right, so and that's I something. That to this gentleman, yeah. um, and he said yes, that they're you know, fully aware that you know towns have a, a commercial code, mm -hmm. and um, it's you know they're fairly similar from town to town, but every once in a while, town will have a certain court or right. something. And uh, you know, he said that they've not had a problem. They they built hundreds of these, and um, I also reached out to a horse trainer who used to ride with my kids actually, and now he's a fancy fancy horse trainer uh, who uh, has a, a big barn and goes down to Wellington, Florida every winter, and you know travels all around showing. Um, he grew up going to Alpine Stables. There's another one, Lauren Underhill. Uh, she uh, she and her husband have a uh, stables in uh, Ohio, and it's a sale barn. They you know train and, and sell horses, and they have similar type of facilities. Um, so it's it, this is not a new thing. This is something that's been going on for 20, 25 years at least, um, and they know that they have to do you know to to fit the codes. I just want to present it as another possibility before we move to close the stables. So, as I, as I said, I, I understand the emotional attachment. When I look at the dollar cost, though, of these things, and the fact that it's not a life safety issue, if something happens out there, and that facility goes down, and we have people in it, or even just the horses, the horses aren't ours. That's unthinkable to do, Terry. And I'm not, I'm not saying we postpone safety issues, but I think, can we give it 30 days? Can we look at some things? Can we get some actual bids? Not from a construction manager, but from somebody who would actually be the contractor? I mean, you know, can we, you know? I don't, I don't see us closing this down at the end of the month. I don't, I don't foresee that. There's no day down here. I, I, I realize that, but I don't, I don't foresee that happening. It's the summer months. We don't have to worry about snow loads. We could, you know, get through our, our summer and the, uh, and the shows because everything's outdoors. But, um, uh, you know, I, I, I was aware of the reports two weeks ago when we were getting all those winds on the weekend, and all I could think about was this thing falling over on those horses, unfortunately. Um, so that, to me, the life safety issue is the biggest thing, because we can't, really something happens. We can't, we've got no, we don't have a foot to stand on if we go into court. Yes, we knew about it, and we did nothing, you know. Um, so I see, I see that as an issue. I see that the, the cost is an issue. I mean, the stable is, is breaking even at best, maybe a small profit every year. And, I would um, like to point out that we're spending over a million dollars to put artificial turf on one soccer field. Oh, I, I understand. I understand. But I think... You know, how many kids are going to play on that one soccer field in soccer season? I mean, you know, I think... And I'm not opposed to putting artificial turf, don't get me wrong. Although there was a real interesting article in, two weeks ago in the Sunday Tribune about the, um, how unsafe artificial turf is as far as breathing, breathing it in and the chemicals that yeah, are in it. And, there's lots know, of studies. All that, lots of studies. 
So I'm, you know, but a million dollars just for that. Right. Um, and as far as non-residents, we just approved a soccer tournament that's going to have 300 teams, 290 or more of which are from out of state or out, but, of, out of town. And I'm not going to stand up for it, but all the pro that profit is, is spent in Palatine. Mm -hmm. Soccer buys mm -hmm. all their own goals. They buy all their own goals. From they, where? they subsidize their kids. From where? We have no soccer. The goals, that, place? the goals that are on the fields that were all paid for by, by Celtic Soccer. But they didn't buy them from a Palatine company. But that's where that money is spent to benefit the Palatine kids. Okay, but you know they used to give this spiel about how, how much sales tax the village got when the, when the tournaments were on. And I checked with Reed Addison. There was no discernible difference between when the when tournaments are here and when they're not here and the amount of sales tax that Palatine gets. So they're not eating at our restaurants. They're not shopping you know, at, at our stores at Target. They're going to Chicago to have a nice Chicago dinner or something. Well, you know. I don't know how it is now, but when I was president, they were asking for our jerseys at, at Einstein Bagels and all the other mm -hmm. places in town wanted to wear Celtic apparel because those people were coming into their stores. I don't know how it is now. Yeah, well, okay. I but I know I, I know that they are subsidizing. But I, I'm just pointing out that we spend a lot of money on some other issues and I kind of feel like this table is you know, not important. I don't think that it's not important. I I think I think fiscally I mean we don't have the money right now to do the stable. We're doing the clue building. We don't have the money to do Birchwood. That's, we've already pulled that back. Um, I, I don't think that it's not, you know, we're, we're forgetting about the stable. We're throwing it away. I just don't feel like financially it's not there. Even if we were going to do something like this, it's still probably two years out before we could do it, at least financially. We'd still have to at some point close the stable, at least for the foreseeable future, so that no one gets hurt until we could actually formulate a plan if we were gonna do this. So yes, 75% of our borders are from outside of Palatine. How do we how do we justify that additional expense? We spend two million dollars on a facility that's basically breaking even. How do we pass on 75% of it works out to be $2 million onto those 40 borders well, for that percentage of I think that, that we cost. have to look at it as not just a Palatine thing. I mean, look at Rolling Meadows. They have two ice arenas. We have zero. So our residents are going to Rolling Meadows, you know, to use the ice. I mean, those, you know, well, rather, those people are going someplace else to play golf, and, someplace, and then somebody's coming to our place to play golf. You know, it, I think you know there's a cooperative of sorts for partner, partners. You can't be everything to everybody. So if you have a, a unique facility like the stables, yes, you're going to get people who don't live in Palatine. Just like the ice arena in Rolling Meadows, I'm sure there's a lot of people who don't live in Rolling Meadows. Right. You know? That's a big. That's a big profit center for rolling out. No, it's not, actually. I checked into it. It's not a profit center. They lose money on it every year. It's hard to believe. But the upkeep and the maintenance on that building, or for whatever it is, but no, they don't make money. They have had years where they've made money. But generally, it's a, it's a money loser. Okay. And really, our mission is not to make money. Our mission is to provide recreation. But our mission is to look out for the taxpayers' Absolutely. dollars, period. Absolutely. That's what this and board so is And so if we about. can have shared facilities that other towns can use, and they have ones that we can use, then we're not all building ice arenas. We're not right. all building stables. We're not all building golf courses or driving ranges or whatever it is, because we have this cooperation. We don't give them breaks on the pricing. You know, I, the, you I know agree. Uh, Out-of-town boarders are paying more than the residents are, just like I'm sure our residents pay more at the ice arena. And, you know, golfers pay, pay more when they're not a resident. I mean, you know, that's typical. That's normal. But um, I don't think that our lack of promotion and, you know, not encouraging this and not getting NWSRA more involved again is our fault. And, and what can we do to improve that? Commissioner Gould, they were out there on Mondays this spring. They had um, three classes on Monday evenings. I checked 
before because I had heard well, that. Perry had actually told me that they weren't using right. it. They had stopped. They had stopped, okay. but it was That's more for the winter thought. season, well, and they, they were using it in the spring. Because it's important. Mm -hmm. Can I interject? You may interject. I don't, don't want to. Be my guest. Um, you know, I, I, I really, I don't want to close the stables. The, this whole idea really, it makes me very sad. I, I mean, to be honest, it really does. But I think maybe now is the time to move forward. You know, I was thinking we had that meeting, I, I keep forgetting how many years ago, it was like eight, ten years ago, whatever it was, where we talked about what's, what's our, what are we doing with the stables? Do we want to be in the stables business or not? Because if we do, we need to put more money to it. And my recollection of that meeting is we're only putting like the basic money towards it. We're not spending huge amounts of money to, to make it into this bigger, to this big thing. So. And maybe that was a mistake. Well, maybe it was, mm -hmm. but now we're at this point where the severity of the condition of everything, maybe now is the time to, to move on. And part of that is the resident, non-resident thing. It, to me, it's one of those factors. It's not the deciding factor. To me, the, the deciding factor is the funding for it. Because, you know, one million, two million, three million, whatever it ends up being, that affects our long-term planning and the things that we want to do, whether it's Birchwood or Clue or something with gymnastics or, something with the maintenance department and a service center, whatever the case may be. So, I, in my, like I said, I really don't want to, but I think in my mind, maybe now is just the time to move on and do something else with that property. And it was always my understanding that we weren't gonna be in the stables business forever. We were, at some point, going to do something else with that property. And with the, the plans for Meadowlark and moving forward with that, maybe now is the time to to um, move forward from the stables. And that doesn't mean tomorrow, but you know, I, I guess I would, ultimately I'd probably amend the, the motion to, to some kind of like, a, with Ben coming back to us with a practical timeline to, to, and a plan to dissolve everything or however that works. I don't know the wording exactly, but to, cause, cause obviously we need a plan, you don't just, you know, however many horses we have out there, you know, 20 horses are ours, right? Mm -hmm. Six, 16, 16 ponies. ponies, like, you don't just go sell them on gov deals. You know what I mean? So you need a plan and that doesn't happen tomorrow. Um, but I mean, taking into consideration the severity of how bad it is there, the other conversations that boards have had over the years about long-term planning for the stables, what we wanted to commit to it, Maybe now is the time to move on and, and do something different. I, it does make me really sad though, because I've always enjoyed the fact that one of our unique things was the stables, and we can come up with you know something else unique to take its place that maybe you know honors that a little bit or something. So, and the one thing that I will have to take into consideration is I have not spoken with Paderma at all yet. Obviously, um, we have to share the condition with them to discuss. You know, concerns. I don't know if that means like if we set a five, six month timeline for people to kind of be able to phase out stables if that's what the board so chooses to decide tonight, we might have to have people potentially sign waivers of some sort and you know recognizing that there is a potential concern um, with the structure moving forward. So that's something we have to understand internally as well if we move forward with this. Yeah. I don't want to kick the can down the road too long. I think when we do that, it turns into bigger problems and bigger headaches. Um, I was so that's say the thinking. same thing. I was, you know, in my short tenure here, it feels like we've been kicking the can the whole time on the fields, and I think we're at a crossroads here. And you know, the in district, out of district numbers, it's not the end all be all metric, but I think it's an important one. Uh, it's hard to measure in some places. It's easy to measure in others. Here it's pretty easy to measure. It's not so easy on the bike path. Uh, the Pickler's measure, that, that number is erroneous uh, because they come to Palatine, Lake Zurich, Barrington, and you get a clipboard stuffed in your face no matter where you are to be a Palatine Pickler. So that metric is, is uh, not valid. But the you know, 2023 programming of 963 people enrolled is a little low, in my opinion, for the volume of residents in Palatine and in the area. Uh, not as concerned about the in and out, but those are a little bit lopsided as well. So, uh, 
Yeah, maybe, maybe an amended thing, or uh, certainly Paderma. It'd be nice to hear what Paderma had to say. Mm -hmm. You know, may, they might force the issue one way or the other immediately as well. So. But if we did approve this, what would be the transition period? Well, we have to understand what the transition period is. I think Jennifer touched on it pretty well from the standpoint of what do we do with the horses and. You know, um, I honestly, I wouldn't know, you know, we would want to find a good home for all of our horses. Uh, we would want to, if we can, we would want to see this, this programming season through so that we can kind of get to a, a good point. I know our programming, if I remember correctly, kind of drops off more towards the winter. So my thought would be to get us through the summer, fall here if we can, if we're allowed to do that. And then at that point in time, phase it out. I mean, there's other considerations here too. We have staff that work out there that we're gonna have to figure that out as well. So there's a number of things that we have to consider here if we move forward with this. And it's gonna take a little bit of a time. Um, we will put together a plan. You know, we have a uh, leadership team meeting tomorrow. If this is a, you know, decided upon tonight, when we start moving forward in that direction with a plan of action, uh, we won't implement it until we come back and, and talk to the board about how we choose to move forward with it. Again, take into consideration Paderma's views and steps that we might have to take place if we are able to keep this going through the, through the fall season. Um, we'll have to get Paderma's blessing and maybe immediately take steps to move that forward. And, and also understanding that once we share this with our patrons, people might not be comfortable having their animals there. So we could see borders and other things kind of drop off or people saying that maybe they don't want to be in the program. So that is a risk that we run as well. So we have to be cognizant and aware of that. So we just have to prepare for that. If somebody isn't comfortable in the program and they want to, you know, get out of it, then of course we will refund them. So those are things that we all, we have to kind of talk about and put in place, but we will have a procedure in place to move forward. Does that answer your question, Joe? So if we approve this tonight, mm -hmm. then we'll have to approve that. Um, I would say yes. I mean, it, it'll be kind of the, the direction that will, will be given to the board, and then the, if the board's okay with that direction, um, I don't know if it'll need a, a voice vote or not. Uh, we'll just kind of, if there's a, a concern with it, you know, we can certainly look at doing something differently. Um, <coughs> I don't know that it has to be voted on again, but I, I will make sure that whatever course of action we feel is the best, we will share that. I will share that with the board so you can have a you know your say in it before we implement it. I I would I guess I would propose an a, amendment to the motion. I well, we can consider. I don't know how that would work, but um, I guess I would consider an amendment to move to close the stables um, with Paderma input and a tentative closing date of November thirtieth. 2024, but also directing Ben to create an exit strategy plan. Yes. And, and present and, and present, present it to, it the board. to us. Why don't we just table it for now? I don't. I'm not, I don't necessarily want to kick it down the road. And and I know there's a there. You you talked about some other options, but. It, it still comes down to funding and long-term planning. With your amended motion recommendation, Jennifer, with the Paderma input, how would that influence uh, the decision one way or the other? <coughs> well, I, I, think, I think that would say if Paderma says you can't stay open until November 30th, we would have to formulate a plan to close earlier. If Paderma, Paderma was uh, in agreement, then they would allow us to stay open until 1130. Um, I think that's the way you would look at it. I think I think this would this would put something out there that the board has done something that we we've, we've made an arrangement. Okay, um, even if we were to do something like this in the future, we're probably not going to be able to go through the winter with this building. So we're going to have to at some point stop operations before we could even continue if we wanted to. Mm -hmm. So. I think that kind of solves something, but if there is something does happen out there, we've taken a first step and we've shown that we're, we have the intent to take care of the safety issue. Does that make sense? It does. So 
that would be so it wouldn't elongate the 11 30 but it might bring it in close potential potentially, potentially. And that's what i would that's the way i would view it mm -hmm. as the amendment yes I just want to make sure yeah. I understood. Yeah. That's all. No, that's well, yeah, and, and, and you know what? There's many parts of, I would uh, imagine, for an exit strategy. And if for some reason it needed to go beyond some, it's a tentative date, right? Like, we talk about it, but, you know, we don't know exactly what an exit strategy is going to entail. All right. So it, to me, it's a tentative, but at least it's, to Terry's point, it's, we, you know, we recognize there's an issue and we are moving to rectify that. Is the board comfortable? I mean, obviously, if we're moving forward with this potentially, even though, you know, we're formulating a plan, um, we, we do need to let people know sooner rather than later that we're moving forward with this, including staff. I think that could be part of the Paderma input and what how we communicate that to okay. everyone. And I, and I think there should be some benefits to staff, you know, hanging around. Mm -hmm. Okay, if they stay till the end, they get an extra 90 days pay, they get their health insurance till they can find a new position. You know, they'll, they'll, they would probably all have new positions in time, but that's the incentive not to leave us hanging, Okay, per se. I think that's probably fair to everybody involved. I mean, do, do we need Paderma input prior to going to staff? Because technically they could say tomorrow. Yeah, I, you know, I'll, I will tomorrow, we will reach out to Paderma and start the discussion and, and go from there and see what, share all these reports with them, the structural engineer's report, and uh, have that conversation tomorrow. And then from there, that'll start formulating our plan based on what they say. So they would know they've got their job for a certain period of time. That's correct. Right. It, you know, if Paderma allows us to continue operations until that point in time. Okay. And if you hear something differently, then you can obviously let us know. Yes, and I if will we call have each to, commissioner individually to If we have know. to yes. do something sooner or whatever. We can always make a change. Mm -hmm. okay. Well, that would be my proposed change. Like I said, I'm not thrilled with the idea, but I think if we, if we have to, we have to make a plan of what to do. So. Okay, I have a second for the amendment. Uh, and the amendment is? Uh, basically to move the stables with and with Paderma input, direct Ben to create an exit strategy plan By with, with a tentative yeah. end date of 11-30-2024. Okay. Got it. I have a second. Oh, second. Can I have a roll call, please? Commissioner Gould. No. Commissioner Patrika. Aye. Commissioner Sammons. Aye. Commissioner Rogers. Aye. President Ruff. Aye. <laughs> Do you want to take a break? Okay, we'll take a five minute break. Keep going. We'll take a five minute break. That's right. Five minute recess at 548. Yeah, let's do that. <laughs> 